I hope my slides are visible and I'm audible. So I'm going to begin my talk with this uh, famous uh, quote from Paracelsus by Paracelsus that poison is in everything and no thing is without poison. It is the dosage which makes it either a poison or a remedy. No financial interest in any of the products mentioned. So botulinum toxin, which was once treated as the most poisonous poison, was first isolated by Professor E. Van uh, Ermengem in 1895. And much later, around 20 to 30 years after the first isolation of this organism, it was Dr. Cornered Behrens who first uh, conceptualized the idea of paralyzing extraocular muscles by pharmacological agents. Much later, Dr. Alan Scott uh, proposed the idea of using botulinum toxin type A for strabismus in humans. And then uh, FDA approved uh, botulinum toxin for the use in strabismus in 1979 and for the spastic conditions like blepharospasm, hemifacial spasm, and Meek syndrome in 1989, and for aesthetic indications like glabellar lines in 2002. So clost uh, botulinum toxin is expressed by the gram-positive anaerobic uh, organism, uh, Clostridium botulinum. It expresses eight exotoxins, namely A, B, C1, C2, D, E, F, and G. Types A, B, and E uh, causes systemic botulism in humans. And when the pot potency was measured, it was noted that type A is the most potent, followed by type B and type F. So coming to the structure, it is a large protein of 150 kilodaltons having a light chain and a heavy chain. Light chain based 50 kilodaltons. It has the catalytic domain and it cleaves the snare proteins. I'll be talking about the snare protein in the mechanism of action as well. It is responsible for the exocytosis of the neurotransmitter ac across the synaptic membrane. And the heavy chain uh, weighs 100 kilodaltons and it is responsible for the binding of the toxin with the nerve terminal. And it is also responsible for the translocation of the L chain into the cytosol from the synaptic vesicle. So this is the mechanism of action. In the top panel named, uh, labeled as table A, uh, panel A, you can see the normal uh, sequence of events that happens at the nerve uh, muscle junction in the absence of botulinum toxin. Uh, so you can see there is exocytosis of the neurotransmitters and then uh, it uh, depolarizes the uh, muscular uh, membrane and thus uh, the muscle contraction takes place. Whereas, in the, uh, whereas when it is exposed to botulinum toxin type A, uh, the light chain is endocytosed and translocated with the help of the heavy chain and the light chain then cleaves the specific snare proteins and then the snare, thereby the snare complex is not formed. This step is blocked. So the membranes do not fuse and then there is no release of the neurotransmitter and hence the muscle fiber is paralyzed. So the binding site differs for different types of botulinum toxin. For botulinum toxin A, it, has, it is at SNAP25. And for botulinum toxin type B, it is at synaptobrevin. The onset of action is from 24 to 72 hours. And uh, we observe the peak of the paralytic effect at about 7 to 10 days. So it, this is very important in patient counseling. We have to counsel the patients that it is not the immediate effect that you see after the injection. It takes about 7 to 10 days for the peak of the paralytic effect to set in. Then we all know that the action of botulinum toxin is temporary. What causes the cessation of clinical activity is of clinical relevance. Uh, the axons expand and the new nerve terminal sprout, which extends towards the muscle. And this happens in a time frame of, of about two months. So this establishes the motor nerve unit and the muscle. Uh, the connection is re-established in about two to four months. These are the axon terminal sprouts. And also the newer concept is that the, uh, there is regeneration of SNAP25 in the original neuromuscular junction, which reestablishes the initial connection and thereby the clinical activity ceases. Uh, there are different commercial preparation of botulinum toxin type A, to name a few, onabotulinum toxin marketed as Botox by Allagan, abobotulinum toxin marketed as Dysport by Ipsen, incobotulinum toxin marketed as Yeoman by Merz Pharmaceuticals, Botulinum toxin A marketed at Shuawu by Evolus Inc. and then CS Spot by uh, Chiba Serum Institute Chiba and then Chinese botulinum toxin marketed as Prozine. So uh, these are the subtle differences between the different commercial preparations of uh, botulinum toxin uh, type A and type B. It is interesting to know that botulinum toxin type B is marketed as Myoblock or, or Neuroblock by Solstice. 
and it is the rima botulinum toxin chemically the uh, composition is rima botulinum toxin and it is also interesting to know that the incobotulinum toxin or the zeomin it has no additive proteins and thus uh, it is the lightest of all only 150 kilo, kilo daltons and since uh, there is there are no additive proteins uh, it is a naked molecule and hence it is interesting to know that it can be uh, stored at room temperature prior to reconstitution uh, the uh, the shelf life varies and as per the company guidelines uh, uh, the molecule after reconstitution is viable only a period only for a period of about 24 hours however there is a consensus that is viable up to four to six weeks without uh, much compromise on the uh, effectiveness so uh, the doses are expressed in terms of biological activity one unit is the amount of toxin that is required uh, to kill 50% uh, of a population of the female Swiss, Swiss Webster mice when uh, injected intraperitoneally. Uh, the bioequivalence ratio of Dysport to Botox is measured to be 3 is to 1 to 4 is to 1. Thus, one unit of Botox is equal to one unit of Xeomin, which is equal to four units of Dysport. So you cannot use Botox and Dysport interchangeably. However, you can use Botox and Xeomin interchangeably. So uh, let us discuss about the differences between Botox, uh, Xeomin, and Dysport. Uh, Xeomin, as I highlighted, it is an one ingredient uh, molecule. It is a naked injectable, no additives. Hence, uh, this makes it uh, least, resistance, least uh, resistant and there is no need of refrigeration before use. However, it is the slowest onset of action. Dysport, the onset of action is 24 hours, Botox 72 hours, and Xeomin 4 days. Also, Botox and uh, Dysport have protective proteins and Xeomin has no protective protein, hence they diffuse differently and hence uh, the difference in the bioequivalence as well. Also, I would like to reiterate that Botox and Dysport are not interchangeable. However, Botox and Xeomin are interchangeable. One unit of Botox is equal to one unit of Xeomin, which is equal to four units of Dysport. Uh, botulinum toxin type B marketed as myoblock. It is a sterile liquid formulation. Uh, it is expressed by Clostridium botulinum type B. Uh, the vials do not need any re reconstitution as they come in sterile liquid formulation. The pH is 5.6, which is acidic, and uh, thereby it has a fa faster onset of action and it, uh, diffuses over a large area. Also, the greater acidity comes with a disadvantage that it causes greater discomfort upon injection. Uh, it is uh, Botox is 50 to 100 times more potent than myoblock. We all know that anti, uh, humoral antibodies are uh, produced against uh, botulinum toxin, and this decreases the effectiveness of botulinum toxin over time. Uh, also, the early reinjection into the muscles are also known to increase the resistance, uh, uh, which is also a function of the cumulative dose, the antigenic load per dose, and the time interval between the injections. Uh, so, uh, thus, we can infer that it is always prudent to start off with the smallest dose and maintain a maximum time interval between the injections, thereby uh, making the resistance least likely. Uh, the botulinum toxin type A has to be reconstituted. It comes in a uh, which is to be it comes in a powder white powdery substance. It has to be reconstituted with sterile non-preserved 0.9% uh, saline. I'll be explaining about the diluent and the effective concentration achieved over the next few slides. So there are weight, uh, each uh, one inject, minute remaining. Yeah, each injector has uh, various methods. So when we inject 1.2 ml of uh, sterile 0.9 percent normal saline to a 50 units vial, it makes it containing one one ml containing 40 units, which is drawn in an insulin syringe which has 40 equal markings. So each marking corresponds to one unit of the toxin. Uh, I would skip, uh, skip this video in the interest of time. And the other method is uh, 2 ml of uh, sterile 0.9% uh, normal saline is injected into a 50 unit vial that makes it 1 ml containing 25 units or, or uh, 0.1 ml containing 2.5 units, which is taken in tuberculin syringe with a 30 gauge needle for the injection. Uh, what are the clinical applications? This is a comprehensive slide. However, I would like to highlight the uh, most important clinical applications over the next few slides. The functional this is the anatomy, the frontalis muscle, the processus, the corrugator, the orbicularis oculi are of much interest uh, in ophthalmology. So this is a patient with blepharospasm. It causes functional blindness. This is a patient with hemifacial spasm. So 
So uh, these are the injections for blepharospasm, and these are the additional injection sites for uh, hemifacial spasm. Once we know which are the injection sites, we should know where not to inject. We shouldn't inject in the preceptal area because the diffusion into LPS causes ptosis. Uh, do not inject inside the lateral orbital rim as it can cause diplopia. Do not uh, inject at the medial end of the lower lid as it can cause punctal ectropion and epiphora. Do not inject near the nasalis as it can cause breathing difficulties. Do not uh, inject over the medial side of the modulus as it can cause uh, drooling of the saliva. So the other functional indications include Meek syndrome and chemotarsorapy. The facial indications include forehead lines. Uh, the frontalis is a muscle of interest. Uh, 10 to 15 units is injected over 8 to 10 points. Next is a procerus in the corrugators, which causes the vertical lines and the transverse right which, which are commonly called as frown lines. Uh, the toxin of 10 to 15 units is injected over uh, 5 to 7 points over the uh, medial belly of the corrugator and the procerus. And then the crow's feet and the bunny lines. Uh, in crow's feet, the toxin is injected to the preorbital part of the orbicularis oculi and uh, in the bunny lines to the nasalis, over 5 to 7 points, a total of 10 to 30 units is injected. The other cosmetic indications include microbotox, mesobotox, smoker's line and eyebrow lift. The other uh, applications in ophthalmology include paralytic squint to weaken the force of contraction of the opposing of the antagonist muscle to straighten the eye. And uh, nystagmus, gustatory epiphora, lid retraction, and spastic entropion are, are the other less common indications. Complications include ptosis, diplopia, dry eye, epiphora, facial weakness, and lag of thalmus. Hence, we should be aware of the sites where not to inject the toxin. So in uh, summary, uh, botulinum neurotoxin is safe, uh, which needs to be reconstituted carefully. The, Onset, the action is also reversible and also the side effects or the complications are also reversible. The dose depends on the commercial preparation and cold chain has to be maintained to maintain the efficacy of the botulinum toxin. Thank you all for the patient hearing. I would stop uh, sharing my screen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sushma. That was a great